Here you can see the reconstruction of burial mound number 26 from Pitten, which is the setting for the long-term experiment we are conducting here in Asparn. This is a new experiment in which we seek to explore and describe the changes to organic substances lying in proximity to bronze artifacts, as is the case in a body burial. Here these bronze objects are lying on textiles, on wooden objects and directly on the skin of this animal carcass. The second burial chamber contains the remains of those cremation experiments which, in a second step, will now be completely transferred to an earth burial. The burnt objects were selected from the pyre and analyzed in detail. Some of these objects will now be buried here in urns under control conditions to investigate the extent to which they or their remains, in some cases textile remains, in other wood remains or in some cases bone, can survive under the conditions of an earth burial. As mentioned earlier, the setting is burial mound number 26 from Pitten. Pitten is one of the very large cemeteries from the Middle Bronze Age, that is from around 1700 BC, and was excavated in the late 1970s. At the time, Mount 26 was removed stone by stone by the archaeologist Franz Hampel and reconstructed here in Asparn before being dismantled again in 2013 when the open air site was redesigned. Fortunately, the stones were not removed but deposited here on the site, now giving us the opportunity not only to reconstruct the mound as an approximation of the original, but to actually rebuild it with the original stone material on the basis of the documentary evidence. Here you can see the burial objects for the long-term burial, as I am particularly interested in the different surfaces of the individual bronze pieces, we have paid particular attention to the tool marks and the surface design. The objects were made using two different processes. Firstly, in lost molds, where the pieces were cast in clay, or secondly, in two shell sandstone molds, such as this one, in the shape of a dagger. They were then reworked in different ways. This ripped bracelet was left as an unfinished casting. This bracelet has already been completely polished while this one is still covered with annealing patina from intermediate annealing during the forging process. My part in this burial experiment has to do with textile research that we carry out at the Natural History Museum Vienna. Very often, the textiles we study come from graves. The textiles are usually mineralized and attached to metal objects, especially to bronze artifacts or objects made of iron. They have been preserved by metal patina. From a textile archaeological perspective, we aim to understand how this happens and how textile evidence that is found in cremation graves can be interpreted. All the fabrics we use for our experiments are, of course, based on original finds from this period, both in terms of the material and the weave structure, as well as patterns and colors. Even the details about tailoring are based on originals, for example, from the salt mine Hallstatt or from graves. The original bronze artifacts we are using for the graves are finds from Inzersdorf ob der Treisen, and they also included knobbed rings. We wanted to put those rings in a natural, reasonable context, and so we decided to make two braids of human hair and to push the rings onto them. As I have such long hair, I donated it for the pig. And this really shows how far experimental archaeology can sometimes be taken. 
In recent years, we have lit and burned a number of funeral pyres, and the pieces we are now going to bury were taken from them. In the Middle Bronze Age, both inhumation, the interment of a complete corpse, and cremation were used for burials. In the case of cremations, the deceased was not placed naked on the pyre. These garments also have non-organic elements, which tend not to burn. From the early Bronze Age onwards, for example, we know of the existence of small buttons, such as these on the shroud that will be placed on the body burial. We have also burned such buttons before, and in very large quantities. Their material properties show very typical changes due to the fire, and it is precisely these changes that we wanted to examine more closely in order to find out how they alter when the objects are stored in the ground. For this purpose, we cut several of the objects in half, with the intention of keeping some of the halves and burying the others, so we can then make a direct comparison of how they change in the soil. We are particularly interested in the structure of copper and tin in the bronzes, as these components react in different ways. This means, when burned, the tin slowly diffuses outwards. This is also what happens when it is stored in the ground. It is therefore interesting to see how exactly the subsequent storage in the soil additionally influences the process. We are planning to leave the burials in the earth for approximately 20 years before uncovering them again in the controlled scientific excavation and, of course, subjecting them to comprehensive analysis.